We live in a world dominated by science and technology, and yet science is one of the most polarizing subjects to study at school, and opinions on science are even further split later on in life. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the reasons people might dislike science, and also see if we can come up with any solutions. Ten years ago, Tyler DeWitt posted a video to his YouTube channel asking, Why do so many people hate science? He was looking for answers in the comments, and the results were... Conclusive. It's no great secret that a bad teacher or bad lessons can make you disinterested in a subject. A teacher who's engaging, passionate, and knowledgeable about their topic is one of the biggest catalysts to getting people hooked on that subject. But a teacher who is bored or just going through emotions or trying to get to the end of the lesson is equally important in putting people off that subject. There are a few things that make it even harder for both teachers and students alike. A typical science curriculum contains a lot of content, and this means that it's difficult for even highly achieving students to fully understand the topic before you just swept on to the next one. There's a lot of emphasis on exams and results instead of developing curiosity and creativity, both of which are vital for scientific research. So much of the information can be and often is rope that, just repeating it again and again and again. And whilst the words might be memorized, the meaning is completely lost. Science quickly becomes associated with boredom and low level skills and any enthusiasm for the subject is lost. So, what was your experience with science education? Were there any particular memorable lessons or practical activities that you did that made you interested in the subject? There is another issue associated with teaching science that makes it difficult for students to enjoy it. And that brings us lastly on to our second point. Science is difficult. It's easy enough to say that science is just about asking questions about the world around us, try and get the answer. And that's 100% correct, but there's a lot of understanding that needs to take place in order to ensure that the correct question is being asked, and even more to ensure that the answer you get is valid. Things like the scientific method are just the start. When it comes to things like calculating uncertainties to ensure the validity of your data, it's not the most fun part of science. Some people. And that's not even considering all of the theory that you need to learn in order to even understand the topic you're trying to ask a question about. Learning science requires mathematical skills, communication skills, analytical skills, problem solving skills, technical skills, as well as interpersonal skills so you can collaborate together with other scientists. There's also some areas of research that require a detailed understanding of ethics, and that brings us pretty nicely on to point number three. It's very easy to find examples of objections to science due to potential moral or ethical conflicts, among other reasons. Animal testing is a huge part of clinical trials, but animals don't get to volunteer for this. So it can be tricky to balance the positives versus the negatives. Animal testing has helped develop so many of the medical treatments that we take for granted. But I don't want cute little Mr. Wiggles here to be used for that. As well as that, we have embryonic stem cell research, which some people object to. Research carried out on dead bodies, although they did usually sign up for it beforehand. As well as research either directly or indirectly used to support development of biological, chemical or nuclear weapons. And on top of this, we now have science challenging our personal lifestyle choices and actions. It tells us that we're causing harm to the environment, that we're creating too much pollution, that we're killing wildlife. Ultimately, this isn't something that we want to hear. So in response to this, some people will reject science and its messages. Point four brings us on to how scientists overall are perceived. And on this channel, we've touched on this before. There's a somewhat romantic view of scientists being these lone maverick geniuses. Be impressive if they can do it, but not particularly realistic. It could also be quite an uninspiring view of scientists as when scientists like this are portrayed in media and such, they're often quite lonely or struggle in social situations. It makes for nice stories. Our own scientist struggles against the odds, makes an amazing discovery and changes the world. Sounds amazing, but it's missing the creativity of the problem solving and the collaboration of all the many people that likely contributed to that discovery. But this aspect of science really makes it outside the group of people who either are or directly know scientists. Because when telling these stories, we look for a human connection and it's easiest to connect with one single person and 200 people working together in a team. team. You need someone in charge, someone to take credit, someone to be your authority on this new discovery. It's hard to argue that scientific facts are wrong. They're evidence that has been collected and found to be true little snippets of what's going on inside our world. But the idea that scientists think science is unquestionable is just wrong. All scientific ideas and theories are the very rigorous set of continuous testing to ensure that they still hold true. Scientists are, by nature, questioning individuals who want to find the answers to what they're asking about the world and how it works. If you're challenging existing answers, that 
could make you a good scientist, but this shouldn't be confused with people who ask questions, but then don't accept the answers that they don't like. In addition, it's also bad scientific practice to reject a theory just because you don't understand it. On top of this, some people can be good scientists, but bad people. Some scientists can be dicks. And unfortunately, some of these scientists try and use their scientific knowledge as a bludgeon to try and derive some authority or superiority to other people. If you meet them, you might well be part of scientists and sadly science overall. So there's five reasons people hate science and they shouldn't because science is amazing. But with those reasons, what's the solution? Well, I think it starts from the bottom. I think it starts where we started with the education of science. Students worldwide are taught just a ton of facts and just memorizing more and more and more information and not always being given the full understanding of why that information is important, why it's relevant, or how it links into other things that they've already learned. Science should be taught in a way that is accessible, interactive, and exciting. In a way that harnesses and develops curiosity and demonstrates its relevance to the wider world. But most schools don't have the time or the autonomy to broaden it out beyond their narrow science curriculum, and a lot of them don't have the resources to make it happen. But taking up the teaching of science worldwide like this would broaden the appeal and understanding of science beyond the relatively narrow group of people who want to take it beyond their school days. With that comes a little bit more trust in science so it would make it easier for people to dismiss somewhat obvious lies about science. We won't have to argue about whether or not it's right because people will understand for themselves because they had enough science education and understanding to make that judgment. And a better science education worldwide means more people entering the science profession. This means more people working on innovating and developing technology that could one day save someone's life. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Understanding science on even a basic level encourages more people to ask questions. Just like this one. If you want to know the answer, you should click and find out.